Okay, this time, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Chai Sapun Yong. And my name is Suvijak Chai Si. We are a whole co-host in this section. We, uh, today, we want to talk with the, everyone for coming to ISU International Conference uh, in 2022 in the section of science and uh, engineer or technology. Now I will start with the special topic under the title of the controlling colloid system by A to the brew and OT interfacial free the engineer by the associate professor Dr. Hiroki Mitsubara from the graduate school and uh, up at one the science and engineer from the Hiroshima University and Japan. In during the 2010, he got the award from the young scientist from the division for, uh, of the colloid and the software chemistry by the Chemistry Society of the Japan. This time, please welcome to Associate Professor Hiroki Masubara for presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank organizing committee, especially Professor Kanda. Uh, for the invitation to the conference. Uh, today, I will talk my research works to all participants, uh, including amateurs of colloidal chemistry in an easy, easy to understand manner. I'm Hiroki Matsubara from Kyushu University. Uh, I will start my talk uh, with the definition of colloids. The colloidal systems are the substances made up of particles with linear dimensions in the range of uh, 10 to the power of minus 9 to the power of minus 6 meter dispersed in a continuous gas, liquid, and the solid medium, whose properties strongly dependent on the large specific surface area. If we break the macroscopic uh, particles, for example, uh, one centimeter in radius, a, into a two, uh, one micron a particles, the surface area increases from about a, a 12 square centimeters to the a to, uh, 12 square meters. So therefore to control the colloidal systems, uh, it is greatly important to manipulate the surface property of the particles. Here, I'm showing uh, some daily life examples of colloids from the viewpoint of kinds of particle phases dispersed in a media. Example of gas dispersions. Gas particle dispersions are forms, a, which is the gas dispersions in water and porous a, materials like charcoals and fine solid particles. There it includes a lot of small air portions in the ga uh, gap between the uh, solid, po uh, solid portions. And the daily products uh, such as milk, butter, margarines, and the cosmetic emulsions uh, and the liquid sprays are also uh, called uh, colloidal systems. And uh, this is uh, classified into the liquid dispersions. The examples of solid particle dispersions are the liquid opals and the stained glasses and the pigmented plastics and the paints. And to control the uh, surface property of these systems, I have used the surface or interfacial tensions. Uh, interfacial tension, which is equal to the surface or interfacial free energy of the interface considered. The molecules located in the uh, bulk of the liquid are on average uh, subjected to equal a molecule attraction in all directions. Well, at those located at, for example, the air liquid interface, 
experience unbalanced attraction resulting in a net inward pull. Surface tension is the tendency of liquid, uh, su uh, liquid surfaces to shrink into a minimum surface area possible. The surface tension or interfacial tension has a dimension of force per unit length or energy per unit area. These two are equivalent as I said, but when I referring uh, to energy per unit area, it is more common to use the term surface free energy. And to control the uh, surface free energy, the surfactants are widely used. Here I'm showing two examples of surfactants, an ionic surfactant and non-ionic surfactant. These molecules have hydrophobic tail groups that have a strong affinity to air or oil phases, and the hydrophilic head groups that favors water or pore solvent. Owing to such structure, surfactants can adsorb at the interface and reduce the surface free energy. To explain the effect of surface free energy reduction in the corridor system, I will explain the role of the surfactant in laundry. When the surfactant concentration increased, the surface tension of the uh, the uh, surface tension of water decreases rapidly and became constant by the aggregate formation in the liquid called micelles. The micelles are organized aggregates of surfactants in which the hydrocarbon chains are oriented in, uh, towards the interior of the micelle and leaving the hydrophilic groups uh, in the aqueous medium. The picture on the right hand side showed how we can solubilize oil in water. In the absence of surfactant, oil does not disperse in water and phase separated. Here, the oil phase, it's colored by lead using an oil solve dye. However, as realized the structure of the micelles, oil can be solubilized into the uh, micelle core if surfactant is added in a proper concentration above its critical micelle concentration. This behavior can be understood by the difference between the oil water interfacial a free energy. The interfacial free energy of pure oil and water is about uh, 50 mJ per square meter, but it's decreased to about 10 mJ square per meter uh, or less by the adsorption of the surfactant molecules. So hence we can wash out the oily strains of your clothes with detergent as a homogeneous dispersion uh, in washing water. The surfactant is useful to many applications. However, in practice, industrial and uh, application research is more proceeded than academic understandings, and most corridor systems are still handled by the know-how of the engineers. So we have trying to understand a, and control corridor systems well designed manner from the interface of free energies. Today, I'd like to uh, share some of our research uh, achievements to the participants of this conference. The target of my work is the uh, corridor systems with air water and oil water interfaces and their applications. So the wetting, emulsions, and the particle stabilized emulsions, uh, which is also called pickling emulsions, the, our strategy to control the uh, interfacial free energy of these systems is first, uh, firstly, the surfactant adsorption, and then sometimes consider the intramolecular interaction in the mixed adsorbed films, and then phase transition of the adsorbed films. Okay, first, I will explain the wetting behavior of liquid droplet on a substrate. In such a system, there's a three interfacial tensions coexisting, say gas liquid 
and the gas sub uh, sorry liquid substrate and the gas substrate interfacial tensions. The contact angle of droplet, which is sometimes also called wettability of the liquid, it's determined by the balance between these three interfacial tensions. If these two interfacial tension is relatively large, the three phase uh, contact line is uh, put inward and the liquid droplet uh, has a large contact angles. On the other hand, if the, this interfacial tension becomes larger, the contact angles becomes small, okay, becomes small. And finally, we have a wetting transition. However, trying, uh, however, to define the wetting transition, the interfacial energy is more useful. The wetting transition is the process that the air substrate interfaces is replaced by the sum of two interfaces, the air liquid interface and the liquid substrate interfaces. Hence, the Hence, the wetting transition occurs. The spreading coefficient defined here has a positive value. And maybe you have a, a fluorine coated cooking pans or that protection clothes. The metals or fibers has normally have a high surface energy because the origin of the interfacial energy, inter, uh, intermolecular interaction is much stronger in the solid phase than in the liquid phase. So therefore, if the droplet is placed on, the sub, on, on such a substrate, the water spreads out to cover the high energy surface replaced by the lower energy surfaces, okay? But the fluorocarbons and related to chemicals, these green uh, layers here, uh, can be used uh, for water and oil repellent. They also repel most of the solid powders because the fluorine processed surface has a surface free energy about 10 or 15 millijoule per hemometers. So these features are being applied stain proof materials such as a uh, clothes and toys for the infants. But in order to understand the wetting behavior more in detail, we investigated the wetting of alkan droplet on the surfactant solution surfaces. The spreading coefficient of alkans on pure water changes sign from positive to negative a, between the hexan and the hexadecan, a heptan. Hence, the shorter alkans automatically spread on the water surface, but longer alkans remains as an oil droplet. But if you, can, if you can change the sign of the spreading coefficient for the longer alkans by the surfactant adsorption, the wetting transition can be realized. Example of this transition is hexadecan droplet on aqueous solutions of a dressio trimethyl ammonium, a bromide, a data. In this, in this system, the partial wetting, uh, this is also called a non-wetting state, is realized at very low data concentrations. In the partial, oh, sorry, where the two uh, dilute two dimensional gas of a uh, data molecules are present at the interface. However, as the concentration of DTAB increases, a first order transition to pseudo partial wetting occurs. For all liquid alkans on water, the complete wetting is uh, restricted by the attractive Van der Waals interactions in the wetting film. Actually, the thickness of the wetting film estimated using ellipsometry is 0.7 nanometer which is much less than the extended chain length of hexadecan, two nanometer, indicating that chains of DTAB and hexadecan are very much disordered in the mixed molar layer and it's in the two dimensional liquid state. 
uh, in this slide, the difference between the complete wetting and the pseudo partial wetting is explained. So when the air water interfacial tension became larger than the sum of the oil water and air oil interface, the splitting coefficient has a positive sign and oil starts to spread at the air water interface. <coughs> Sorry, at that moment, if there a repulsive in, uh, interfacial uh, interaction uh, exists at the air oil and the oil water interface, the free energy of the wetting film decreases uh, monotonically with increasing the wetting film thickness. As a result, we have a complete wetting. However, if the attractive Van der Waals interaction uh, is working in the, in the wetting film, the surface free energy profile has a minimum at the finite uh, film thickness, and hence the oil droplet coexists with a molecular thick film. If the chain and, and the, the unique feature of this uh, pseudo partial wetting film is if the chain lengths of surfactant alkanes are matched, the surfactant alkan mix that is of the film uh, shows undergoes another thermal transition to the surface frozen moon layer under cooling. However, if you use the chain mismatched alkanes, uh, they show the unique bilayer structures where the frozen moon layer of alkanes uh, rested on the liquid like mixed moon layer. In the next topic, we utilize the sur this surface frozen monolayer to stabilize the oil and water uh, emulsions. In general, the surfactant adsorbed the film has three distinct surface phases, which is respectively corresponding to three dimensional gas, liquid, and the solid phases. However, this two dimensional solid film are normally limited for sparkling, sparingly water soluble non ionic amplifiers due to the implying electrostatic repulsions uh, for the normal ionic surfactant film. In our system, the incorporation of tetradecan molecules into the cationic surfactant adsorbed film enhance the later Van der Waals interaction between the chains, while the interfacial density of surfactant uh, remain constant. The interfacial tension, interfacial free energy decreases uh, when they uh, adsorb the film, change from the gaseous state or liquid state and the solid state. Hence, the, if we cover the surface of the emulsion droplet by the surface frozen film, we could create a more stable emulsions. We applied this uh, surface flaging transition of a hexadecyl trimethyl ammonium chloride, a CTAC, a adsorbed film at the tetradecan water interface to control the kinetic stability of oil and water emulsions. And it was successfully demonstrated that the volume of oil and water emulsion, a uh, disturbed region of these pictures, uh, this continuously changed at the surface freezing transition of this, uh, to, uh, over this interface, uh, 9.5 degrees C. The feature that, oh, we also sh uh, show uh, uh, the experimental result of the surface freezing transition of the uh, mixture of the oils. We changed the mixing ratio of dodecan and uh, tetradecan to uh, 0% tetradecan to 100% tetradecan. The ellipticity, uh, this is corresponding to the interfacial uh, dielectric constant of the film, uh, is clearly uh, different if we change. Uh, if, if I only add 10% of tetradecan into the 90% of dodecan, after that, the interfacial uh, property is almost the same as the uh, surface frozen film of CTAC and the tetradecan. That means the chain mismatched alkanes are completely repelled from the interface if, that, if, uh, from, if the surface freezing film 
uh, formed from the mixture of the oils. So this is very important because if there's uh, if, if you uh, use the cosmetic oils, th that is really a mixture of lots of different types of oils, and some have branched oils, some have a the a double bonded oils, and some are uh, different chains, a uh, chain lengths, but in in such a systems, we only have the ten percent uh, of hexadecan or uh, that sort of thing uh, that the hexadecan uh, preferentially absorb in the surf surface frozen film, and all these uh, other types of oils are uh, encapsulate in the emulsion droplet. But the problem is that in this system, the uh, surface frozen temperature is about 10 degrees C, which is a uh, very much a uh, lower than the our uh, ambient temperature range. So we applied a to improve the interfacial freezing temperature that we used normal alkanols, the acetanol, a as a substitute of normal alkans. A long chain alcohols they originally show the surface freezing condition at the oil water interface. However, the surface surface frozen film of such normal alkanos cannot stabilize OW emulsions on their own. However, the existence of surface freezing indicates that there is no strong in-plane repulsions between the hydroxyl groups. And in addition, the surface activity of normal alkanos may lead to a shift of surface freezing temperature of CTAC to a higher temperature. Hence, we used uh, hexadecanol uh, Dodecan solutions as oil phase and measure the interfacial tension against a uh, CTAC uh, aqueous solutions. And this figure A shows the interfacial tension measured at fixed hexadecanal concentration with varying CTAC concentrations. The break points of the interfacial tension curves corresponding to the surface phase transition between a surface to liquid film to the a surface frozen film. I was shown in curve number one, the hexadecanol shows surface freezing without CTAC. And as CTAC concentration increases, the transition temperature shifted to higher temperatures and it reaches about 25 centigrade. And the figure B shows the interfacial tension measured at fixed CTAC concentration a balling the uh, hexadecanal concentrations. Now, this curve number one shows that, that the uh, surface freezing does not occur in the absence of hexadecanal. That means the dodecan molecules cannot penetrate into the sheet of the film. Uh, these two experiments demonstrate that the transition temperature can be uh, controlled widely from about 10 degrees C to 50, uh, 25 degrees C, simply by the mixing ratio of CTAC and uh, hexadecanol. And after the characterization of the Prana oil water interface, we also studied the surface frozen film at the interface of the emulsion droplets using a small angle neutron scattering. I will skip the detail of this experiment. However, the, a small angle uh, neutron scattering uh, clearly showed that the uh, surface of the emulsion droplet is covered with a surface fro uh, frozen film of a uh, CTAC and uh, hexadecanol. And then we uh, investigated the relation between uh, oil water emulsion stability and the physical state of the interfacial films. Uh, this figure shows a height, height of the emulsion uh, phase in the test tube uh, measured 24 hours after the emulsification. The disturbed region in this picture is the OW emulsions. The horizontal axis is CETA concentrations. Uh, it can be clearly seen that the emulsions are prepared in the surface frozen region, this blue plot, are significantly more stable than those prepared in the surface liquid region, this orange plot. The efficiency of the stabilization was almost the same for the previously examined CTAC tetradecan mixed out of the film, shown by these open circles. 
However, it is important to note that the surface freezing temperature was increased from 9.5 degrees C to uh, 25 degrees C in the present case. The stability of the frozen film covered emulsion is also confirmed in the time evolution of droplet radius determined by dynamic light uh, scattering. The functions expected for the surface frozen st stabilized emulsions are first the improvement stability. And secondly, the less use of surfactant, because in this case, the solvent or molecules form the surface phases uh, together with the surfactant. So we can reduce the amount of surfactant needed. And we can solubilize arbitrary oils uh, if the oils have a different chain lengths or double bonded or branch chains uh, from the interface at the surface freezing transition. And this is also the temperature response capsules. So Finally, I'd like to uh, shortly mention the uh, SDGs issue in colloidal chemistry. The, for, to support the SDGs, the use of new synthetic surfactants are very much restricted in these days. So the, for the uh, colloidal scientists, it is a, we need to create new functions from existing materials and their combinations because we can't use new synthetic surfactants. So in that uh, sense, the import, uh, physical chemical approach to the uh, colloidal phenomena is very much important. And the controlling surface free energy using surface phase transition has a potential importance for SDG support from this viewpoint, uh, I think. Chairman, how many, uh, how, how many minutes uh, should I have? Okay, anyway, I will, I will just, finally, I will just briefly introduce the, our recent extension of surface free energy study to uh, pickling emulsion transition. The pickling emulsion is a kind of emulsion uh, stabilized by adsorbed particles at the oil water interface. The pickling emulsion is also known as one of the micro capsules, nanometer, micrometer sized small sphere enclosing some useful materials like drugs, uh, increased stability of the product being encapsulated and provide a controlled release of the contents. The driving force of particle absorption is replacement of high energy or water interface by the particles. So now we are trying to control size and stability of pickling emulsions using interfacial tension. So this is the last slide. Here uh, we have a liquid mixture having a lower constituent point. Uh, we can make stable pickling emulsions here at high temperature region. But as temperature is decreased to uh, decreased interfacial tension between two solvents decreases and approaches zero at the constituent point. So there's no reason for particles to absorb to the interface. So that this video showing the uh, difference in demolification temperature of pickling emulsions. Sorry, I will show you the uh, video again. Uh, the video showing the difference in the emulsification temperature of pickling emulsions prepared with 10 nanometer and 100 nanometer emulsions. We are changing temperature continuously. And they, as you can see, the pickling emulsion with 10, uh, 10 nanometer silica particle is much uh, stable than that uh, prepared with 100 micron particles. Uh, we have done the same experiments for different size silica particles. And by the effect of the gravity acting on the other of the particle, uh, it is suggested that the stability of pickling emulsion is largely influenced by the particle size, but we can control the demultification behavior by using the interfacial tensions. Okay, this is a summary of my talk. The wetting transition is governed by the interfacial energy of coexisting three interfaces, and it can be controlled by the surfactant absorption. And uh, in the mixture of the film of surfactant and alkane having similar chain lengths, the surface freezing transition takes place upon cooling. 
the surface raising film covered oil water, oil and water emulsions can be uh, very stable compared to those covered with surface liquid films. And by the reduction of oil water interfacial tension, the demulsification of the pickling emulsion can be realized. And the future work is the uh, stabilization of oil water emulsions by the surface freezing with various types of food, cosmetic, and the commercial oils. And the number two is the size control of pickling emulsions by using oil water interfacial tension. Okay, uh, that is all I, I want to say today. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Yeah, thank you, your, your uh, SS Professor Hiroki Masubara. And, and now this time is uh, question and answer. Any have any question? Any hand with kitchen? Okay, thank you, Mrs. Professor Hiroki. Yeah. Okay. And we move the to next.